Thank you, sir. My question is for the Minister for Tertiary Education, and it asks what specific policy changes has the government made to increase the number of apprenticeships and other building skills training programmes since the September Canterbury earthquake? The Honourable okay. Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister for, Minister for Tertiary Education, following the September earthquake, the government first ensured that there were sufficient funded, for sufficiently funded places to meet immediate demands for trades training. Government agencies commenced work with Canterbury Chamber of Commerce to develop skills requirements for the rebuild. Following the obviously much more damaging February earthquake, the TEC and other agencies, both government and non-government, are revising workforce planning and are in the process of mapping available provision and capacity available from TEIs, PTEs and ITOs. We will see a move from other disciplines into trades, which will now be in higher demand and will increase places for trades training as required. The Hon. Darren Hughes. Mr Speaker, does that mean that he has uh, taken papers to the Cabinet specifically suggesting an increase in the number of apprenticeships and other building skills training programmes since the September earthquake? The Hon. Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, no, as I'm aware that there is actually capacity still there. In fact, on behalf of the Minister, I know that the only reason the Minister is not here is because he's at CPIT today, and actually they're already saying that there is capacity for trades training and they could take people uh, as of today and they should please get in touch with them. The Hon. Yeah. Darren Hughes. Yeah. Does the increase in demand that the uh, Minister has uh, referred to for trades people in Christchurch following the two devastating earthquakes mean that the government will restore the $55 million they cut from industry training last year, or do they still believe funding for training will be underutilised? The Honourable Paula uh, Mr Speaker, I think it's um, important that we step through this on behalf of the Minister um, step by step. So at the moment you have um, the consortium of businesses in, um, in Christchurch getting together to analyse what that skills need would be. Um, on, uh, I know that the Minister has also been talking to the Minister for Social Development and Employment and through Vote Employment they've been doing a whole skills analysis of what will be needed there. So as those analyses are done and we're getting ahead, without getting ahead of ourselves as to what the need will be, there should be a true assessment of the Honourable Darren Hughes. When will the House have uh, an understanding from the government about the decision? Well, sorry, let's start again. When will the House know if there will be an increase in the numbers of actual apprenticeships and people involved in other building skills training programmes? Given that the Building and Construction ITO was saying before the two Christchurch earthquakes that demand for building and construction workers was likely to increase dramatically if the country came out of recession. The Hon. Paula uh, Mr Speaker, I think that everyone's um, we're under no illusions that there will be a demand for those skills and there will obviously be a demand for them. What we're doing is actually analysing what the capacity is now, what is going to be needed, and doing that through a step-by-step -step planning process. Good. Question number 10, Sue Kelly.